we wrote, and I wrote it for my friend um, who was going to my school for a little while, and he was really troubled, I guess you could say, and one day he came to school and he told me that he drank like a bottle of whiskey and took like a bottle of pills, and I had no idea what to do, and he ended up going to the hospital, and um, he didn't come close to dying, but it was really scary, and so I wrote this for him. Belly full of liquor and pills, you are pregnant with suicide. And I'm pulling you close to me, trying to push the hurt out of your skin, trying to be your sponge, trying to hold your broken parts together. But as your heart stutters and sputters against my chest, I'm wondering if you need this hug right now more than you need an ambulance. I'm wondering if the doctors can save you from yourself. I'm wondering if the hospital cares about the swarm inside of your ribs, how it will suffocate you again as soon as you are released, as soon as the quiet settles, as soon as the IV is gone, as soon as the backlit faces of the nurses disappear. They could save your life, but they couldn't save your soul. You smile as you say, I'm fine. The scenes break as you speak, and I can see everything that you cannot say. That your will to die is stronger than your will to live. That not feeling anything would be so much better than this daily bleeding. Than watching yourself become victim to your own heart, watching it destroy you. You are your own worst enemy, greatest fear, biggest downfall. Everything about yourself becomes something to take apart, to get rid of, to become fuel for the fire. You leave a trail of ash and smoke wherever you go, and I'm following this, trying not to let you become lost in your own debris, to not let you break your own heart into so many shattered pieces that it will never beat again. The lines on your arms haven't reached deep enough to get to your heart. But they are spilling all of you onto the ground, leaving you behind and lost. <coughs> but this has been your lifelong goal, your young dream, your wish in the well, throwing yourself overboard to get lost in your ocean, forgetting what it meant to swim, to fight, to survive, letting the waves carry you into the most dangerous wells, letting the water fill your lungs until all your language becomes is goodbye. You do not gasp for air like someone holding on. You invite the inability to keep your head above water in, like a childhood best friend, accustomed to the feeling of falling, because you clipped your own wings long ago, left the feathers on the ground for someone else, left the hollow bones to become crushed and useless, spilling the rest of your color onto the ground for the sun to soak up and take away, stealing your light rays, removing the warmth from your body. Now, you are a frozen shell full of half-answered prayers, breathing, but not alive, beaming with hope that someday there will be none left for you. Setting off the bombs inside of your chest, you fight your way to the bottom. Bruises and straight line scars adorn your arms. Beauty marks from the battle with your heart. You wear these proudly, like medals of honor, like you are the hero of your own war. But between these fields of disaster inside of your mind, I know there is a space that isn't being taken up by your own coffin. Somewhere that the graveyard doesn't sing your name daily, a place where you are not carving out your headstone with your own fingernails. A place where your ribs are not caging you in, cradling your laughter like a broken cord. A place that reminds you nothing is permanent, everything is temporary. You will not always be a piano that plays one note. There are full songs inside of you that do not always sound like melancholy. And when the chaos is swimming around you so loudly that you cannot hear yourself living, listen to the slow and sure steady beat of the rhythm inside your chest and catch it like it is the last thing your ears will ever take in again. And don't ever let it go. Please. Never. Never let go. Thank you.